Welcome. What I'd like to do is show you how to um, identify the domain and range of our three trigonometric functions. And the three trigonometric functions we're going to deal with is going to be sine, cosine, and tangent. So what I have on the board uh, to save a little bit of time is I graph the three trigonometric functions. Now, to identify the domain and range of the inverse of a function, it's important to not only know what the graphs look like as well as their domain and range for the parent graphs, but then also to kind of know what the graphs look like for the inverse trigonometric functions. So let's just kind of first focus on the domain and range of our three functions just to make sure we understand that. And then we'll talk about functions and their inverse and how the domain and range are related as well as how the graphs are related. So I like when I first start doing domain and range, I like looking at the graph because um, it's usually one of the easier ways to kind of visualize what the domain and range represent. Remember, the domain and range, basically domain is going to be the set of all x values that we can plug into a function as where we're going to get a y value. And the y value is going to be the set of all y values that come out of the function. So you can basically think of them as the domain is the x values of the graph and the range is the y values of the graph. So by looking at the domain here, when we look at the domain, we notice that these graphs are going to continue indefinitely to the right and indefinitely to the left. That means every x value going along this x-axis, as these graphs are going to continue, I'm always going to have an x value I can plug into the function to get a y value. So the domain of this function is going to be from negative infinity to infinity. Whereas the range is going to be the output, like what are the values that are going to be coming out. So when I plug in an x value, for instance, pi halves, I get out 1. When I plug in an x value negative pi halves, I get negative 1. But if you notice on this graph, it never goes higher than 1, nor as low as negative 1. So the, the range is going to be restricted. I'm going to use a closed interval from negative 1 to positive 1, because the, the values do not go below or above negative 1 and 1. Now let's go and look at the cosine graph. And again, I didn't graph multiple periods just for kind of space purposes. But you can see that these graphs are going to continue on and on. So again, just like kind of the range function, this domain graph continues its curve indefinitely to the right and indefinitely to the left. So therefore, we can say the domain of this curve is going to be from negative infinity to infinity. Now, I'm using an open interval because infinity is not a number. So the, uh, your domain cannot actually obtain infinity, but that's where it's going to be going. So it's going to be an open interval. However, the range, the output, you can see again, it does not go above 1 or it's going to go below negative 1. So I can say my range is going to be closed interval from negative 1 to positive 1. And then now looking at the tangent graph, um, which I kind of made pretty big here, uh, the tangent graph, again, looking at the domain, you can see we have these little lines. And these are going to be our asymptotes. And our asymptotes are going to be what the graph approaches. But um, it's, never, it's not actually going to be a value, a part of our function, these um, vertical asymptotes. So therefore, you can see that the domain for these is going to be each one of these values, it's going to be all real numbers except for where these asymptotes occur. So the easiest way, you know, there's multiple ways to kind of write this, but I'm not going to use our interval notation. What I'm going to use is um, another way to write the domain. I'm going to say the domain is going to be all real numbers except such that x cannot equal, and you can see that my first asymptote occurs at pi halves. And you can see that they're pi halves um, plus you can see they're pi apart from each other. So I'm going to say plus pi n. Now, if you don't understand that, that's kind of a different um, animal here that we get into much more in depth for other videos and so forth. So I wouldn't be so concerned about it, but I just want to kind of you to know, understand mainly the, um, the sine and cosine to really kind of get an idea here. And, and actually, it's not really going to play an effect once we do the inverse anyways. Um, the range, though, you can see that this graph goes down to infinity as well as up to infinity. So therefore, it's going to be from negative infinity to infinity. OK, so now we got the domain range of our, of our trigonometric functions. Let's find the inverse. Now, there's one thing I want you guys to remember. If we say f of x has the coordinate points, um, let's just use x, y. Well, then the inverse of that function, the basically to find the inverse of that function, you're basically going to swap the points, y comma x. And in our introduction of inverses, that was one thing that we looked at. Another way that we looked at finding the inverse by graphing, not only can we switch the points, but the points are actually reflected about the y equals x line. And that y equals x line is here's an x and a y axis, that y equals x line is right there. 
So if I kind of graph one of these y equals x lines for each of my functions, what I can do is I can reflect the graph about that y equals x line. Oh, that's actually. OK. So but usually the easiest thing what I've noticed from students is they have a really hard time doing reflections about a diagonal. So one of the easier ways to do this is to just swap some points that we know are on here and then, um, and then plot those points. So to do sine inverse, now, just like we swap the x and y, you can think of like our x and y axis or uh, axes are going to be swapped as well. So basically, instead of, um, instead of going, uh, you know, having our angles here along the x-axis, now they're going to be along the y-axis. So I'll just do pi halves, pi, negative pi halves, and pi. And then we'll go from, let's see, we'll go to 1 and negative 1. Now, let's go ahead and kind of flick some points here. So at first, in this case, I have um, this point is at pi halves, pi halves 1. Well, now, so this first point, first point I have is pi halves comma 1. So now, if I swap that, I have 1 comma pi halves. So I'll go over 1, up pi halves. And then if I do the same thing for maybe this point, I have negative pi halves comma negative 1. If I swap that, I have negative 1 comma negative pi halves. And if I was going to kind of graph this and follow along with what I am doing here, you would see this graph is kind of going to go like this. And it's going to continue, can continue down, right? But the problem is, if you kind of expand this trigonometric, and the reason why I use green here is we kind of have to stop because what we do is we create a restriction upon the inverse. Because if I continue this graph, if I use that green and I made that all black, well, then my inverse would not be a function. All right? But to evaluate, we want, it to, we want the inverse function to be a function. So we're going to restrict, um, we're going to restrict the domain. I'm sorry, we're going to restrict the range. And that's what happens. We'll get to this further when you type in your calculator. But what we're going to do is we're going to restrict the range. And you can see we're going to restrict the range from the domain is going to be from negative 1 to 1. And we're going to restrict the range from negative pi halves to pi halves. Because if we don't restrict the range, then we're not going to have a function. And we're going to have multiple values. If you were to plug in, for instance, if you're going to plug in what is you know, the sine inverse of 0, you would have infinite many values. For, so to only obtain our one value, we're going to restrict the range. So therefore, the domain of this function is from negative 1 to 1. And you can see that's exactly the opposite here. However, it's not going to be an exact. If I didn't, didn't restrict it, it would go from negative infinity to infinity. But since that's not a function, we're going to restrict the range from negative pi halves to pi halves. So what that means is when you are evaluating for a um, inverse trigonometric inverse sine, your output, your angles, are going to fall between negative pi halves and pi halves. Um, when we go ahead and do uh, cosine, again, the easiest thing to probably do is just swap some points. So let's see some points here. Um, do, 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 do. I have 0, 1. So when I swap that, I have, well, actually, let's change this here. So I'm going to go 1, negative 1. Let's do pi halves, pi, negative pi halves, pi. OK, so I got 0, 1. So when I swap that, that's going to give me 1, comma 0. Uh, let's do pi halves. When I do pi halves, so that's pi halves, comma 0. So when I swap that, pi halves, comma 0 is now 0, comma pi halves. And if I go back to, if I like did this point, if I did negative pi halves 0, so let's do that, negative pi halves comma 0. Well, if I swap those and plot it, I'm at 0 negative pi halves. Well, that's not going to be a part of a, that's gonna, not going to make a function, right? It's not going to pass the vertical line test. So therefore, I'm not going to use negative pi half 0. I want to pick another point. Um, let's pick uh, negative. Let's see where it's going to be negative 1. Well, it's going to be negative 1 over here. So if I click the point uh, pi comma negative 1, and if I swap that, I get negative 1 pi. So that graph 
looks like this. And again, the next point, that negative pi half 0 would be over here, but that's not going to be, that's going to re remake it a not a part of our domain. So that's why we don't re um, include that in our domain, in our range of our trigonometric function. So we're going to leave this restriction, and the restriction is going to be from 0 to pi. The domain, again, in the x values is going to be from negative 1 to 1. So let's write this domain is from negative 1 to 1. And the range is going to be now from 0 to pi. All right, last one. Now in this one, um, eh, OK. Well, in this one, I'm going to swap everything. So instead of having asymptotes, vertical asymptotes at pi halves and negative pi halves, I'm now going to have horizontal asymptotes at pi halves and pi halves. Because if you take this line, and if you reflect this negative line like this, you reflect that one like that, you're going to have two asymptotes. So I'm just going to do pi halves and negative pi halves. So I'll just draw my nice little asymptotes here. Now, I'm just going to use a visual representation because I didn't plot any points. But basically what you can see is if I was actually to graph this a little bit better, the graph would actually look like this. So basically what's happened is this is now going to be going that way. That's going to go up there. That's going to go up there. And that's going to swap there. So now I can basically say my graph is going to look something like this. Okay. Where now you can see the graph is going to go infinitely to the left and infinitely to the right. So the domain of this is going to be from, oops, open interval, negative infinity to infinity. Whereas the range is also going to be restricted, just like sine, from negative pi halves to pi halves. And since those asymptotes, that's going to be your open uh, interval. So there you go, ladies and gentlemen. That is how you find the domain and range of the inverse function. Again, the easiest thing to do is um, you know, look at the domain and range from sine, cosine, tangent, um, and then swap it. But just remember, because when we take the inverse for sine and cosine, we don't have a, it's not a function. We have to restrict the range. And for sine, we restrict the range from negative pi halves and pi halves. And for cosine, we restrict the range from 0 to pi. Tangent is just automatic. Oh, well, actually, we do have to restrict this again because I could do infinite many of these. But if you notice, if I continue this, you know, if I did another graph, it wouldn't pass the vertical line test. So we do, again, actually restrict tangent from negative pi halves to pi halves. And that's helpful because when we do the inverse, when we plug in the inverse tangent, inverse sine, inverse cosine, we're only getting one value because our range is restricted. If we didn't restrict it range, we'd have multiple values and it wouldn't be a function no longer. So, there you go, ladies and gentlemen. Hope that helped. Thank you.